Good evening. Tonight I'll be reading Joshua chapter 16 and 17. Chapter 16, the borders of Ephraim. The lot fell to the children of Joseph from the Jordan by Jericho to the waters of Jericho on the east to the wilderness that goes up from Jericho through the mountains to Bethel. Then went out from Bethel to Luz, passed along to the border of the Arkwrites and Aratoth, and went down westward to the boundary of the Jophites, Jophites as far as the boundary of Lower Beth Heron to Gizar, and it ended at the sea. So the children of Joseph, Mashnash, and Ephraim took their inheritance. The border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was this. The border of their inheritance on the east side was Eroth, Adar, as far as the upper Beth Heron. And the border went out towards the sea on the north side of Miklarth, and then the border went around eastward to Teneth, Shiloh, and passed by it on the east of Joada. Then it went down from Genoa to Ataroth and Nera, reached to Jericho, and came out at the Jordan. The border went out from Tapua westward to the brook Kana, and it ended at the sea. This was a inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, according to their families. The separate cities of the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Mashnah, all the cities in their villages. And they did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gizar, but the Canaanites dwell among the Ephrates all to this day and have become forced laborers. The ter uh, chap uh, Joshua chapter 17, the territory of Manash. There was also a lot for the tribe of Manash, and for he was the firstborn of Joseph, namely Mekur, the firstborn of Messiah, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war. Therefore, he was given Gilead and Manash. And there was a lot for the rest of the children of Manash, according to their families, for the children of Ezber, the children of Helak, the children of Azar, the children of Shimik, the children of Hefer, the children of Shimi. These were the children of Manash, the son of Joseph, according to their families. But Zelophed, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Mekar, the son of Meshaish, had no sons, but only daughters. And these are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, Hagla, Mika, and Tizra. And they came near before Ezlar, the priest, before Joshua, the son of Nun, and before the ruler, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among their father's brothers. Ten shares fell to Manash, besides the land of Gilead and Basham, which were on the other side of the Jordan. Because the daughters of Meshach received an inheritance among their, his sons, and the rest of Meshach's sons had the land of Gilead. And the territory of Manash was from Ashner to Mikalath, that lies east of the Shurishim. And the border went along south to the inhabitants of in Tepoth. Manish had the land of Tepala, but Tepala on the other border of Mashash belonged to the children of Ephraim. And the border descended to the book to the brook Cana southward to the brook. These cities of Ephraim are among the cities of Mashnash. The border of Mashnash was on the north side of the brook and it ended at the sea. Southward, it was Ephron's northward. It was Mashnash, and the sea was its borders. Mashnash territory was adjoining Asher on the north and Eskar on the east. And in Eskar and in Asher, Mashnash had Beth Sheen and its towns, Iblim, and its towns, 
the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, the inhabitants of Endor and its towns, and the inhabitants of Endor and its towns, and the inhabitants of Teklon and its towns, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns. Three hilly regions. Yet the children of Mashiach could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites were determined to dwell in the land. And it happened when the children of Israel grew strong that they put the Canaanites to forced labor and did not utterly drive them out. Then the children of Joseph spoke to jo Joshua saying, why have you given us only one lot and one share to inherit since we are a great people and as much the Lord had blessed us until now? So Joshua answered them, if you are a great people, then go up to the forest country and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the Prezrites and the giants, since the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for you. But the children of Joseph said, the mountain country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both these who are of Beth Shen and its towns and those who are only valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manah, saying, You are a great people and have great power. You shall not have only one lot, but the mountain country shall be yours. Although it's wooded, you shall cut it down, and its farther extent shall be yours. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots and are strong. So that's a very, very interesting two chapters that you see there. Um, so you see them talk about, here we go, talking about giants again. You know, they had giants, they had iron chariots of the time. And uh, so... And the people was, you know, kind of a little bit of afraid to go there. And they wanted more to seem a little bit kind of greedy. Uh, but they had a lot of people, I guess, they had to take care of. So they was given the mountains and everything. And uh, so, and but another thing that kind of hits me was uh, the Canaanites who dwelt there uh, to this day have become forced laborers, you know, so the. So it's kind of, you know, I really like the Old Testament Bible. It's it's really interesting uh, to me. I really enjoy the Old Testament just as much as the New Testament, to be honest. Uh, so the Old Testament, you know, it shows, you know, the Israelites was slaves in Egypt, you know, and then uh, God led Moses and the, and, the, and the slaves out of Egypt, crossed the sea, crossed the the sea, you know, it came into these new lands. And so what they do, they enslave the people of the lands. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, hard to see and, you know, hard to understand why that happened. And I'm sure to go on to say, you know, how they was freed and whatnot. But it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, you know, that's why you got to kind of be careful of what you let yourself be sub subjected to because, what you know, things that happen to, to you, you tend to do on to other people, okay? So whatever that you're going through, eventually, you know, you it's a good chance that you could do it. That's why they say, you know, a lot of hurt people hurt people, you know? And so really, you know, you have to, you know, like the, the when they became slaves in Egypt, you know, and now they're slaving people themselves. It's a learned behavior that's, you know, not natural, but that was actually, you know, you know, they were shown the way of that through the Egyptians. And who knows before that, you know, how long that's been going on for. However, the Old Testament, you will see a lot of things in there that makes you kind of scratch your head and wonder, hmm, that's interesting, you know. But they talk about the giants in the land over and over the giants, you know, that keeps popping up. And uh, they're dividing up the land. And uh, the land is, is so it's interesting read for sure. So let's go ahead and end this with a prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all you have done for me. Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for my sins as I forgive those who have sinned upon me. Lord Jesus Christ, please give me the strength, wisdom, and knowledge that I need to read the Bible, understand the Bible, and live the way the Bible teaches me. Lord Jesus Christ, your will is my will. 
Lord Jesus Christ, please enter my heart and be my personal savior. Lord Jesus Christ, please love my children and look out for them as you have looked out for me. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.